Welcome to our video series introducing Adobe Dreamweaver. In this video, we'll explore the Dreamweaver CS3 interface. In this video, I'm going to be talking through the Dreamweaver interface and what's available to you. This is very important because the interface can initially be quite overwhelming because it's very customizable and you may not be immediately aware of what each of the sections is for. Also, because it's so customizable, sometimes areas of the screen just disappear and you'll want to know how to bring them back. A very useful menu for all of this is the Window menu. You can really bring up or take away almost all areas of the screen through this menu. So first of all, Insert and it brings up the Insert Toolbar. And this toolbar has a number of tabs, as you can see. The Common tab has such things as Insert Hyperlink, Insert Email Link, Named Anchor, and you don't need to know what all these are at this stage of the game, but you can see what's available to you. Insert Table, there's a shortcut, Insert Div Tag, Insert Images, and so on. If you go to the Layout tab, insert div tag again, draw AP div, spry menu bar, and you can see that it gets progressively more advanced. And often, unless you're doing quite advanced web design, you don't need to worry about this too much. Forms. You can insert forms, text field, hidden field, and so on. You see how that works. So we can tuck that away just by clicking on Insert, or go to the Window menu, click on Insert, and it appears. And it's now ticked. Click on Insert again, and it disappears until you want to bring it back. OK, and remember these arrows to the right and at the bottom. If you click on that, they bring up boxes with more options. For example, the Very Important Properties box which allows you to customize basically everything on your web page. And to the right, a number of further areas. For example, Files, Tag Inspector, and so on. But let's tuck those away by clicking on the right arrow there, and the down arrow here. OK, Window, Properties, if you just want to bring properties up and Window Properties to get rid of it. And Window, CSS Styles, Cascading Style Sheets. And there it is, but we actually need to do it again to bring up that area of the screen. So CSS Styles, and there we go. Again, you don't need to worry about this too much, but it's just telling you style settings within the document. And if we want to get rid of it, go Window, CSS Styles, and it gets tucked away. Window, AP Elements, and OK, there it is. And this is actually a tab of CSS, you see. The CSS area here, you can click on it, and it minimizes it, you could say. Click on it again, and it brings it back. And there are the two tabs here, CSS Styles, and AP Elements. OK, Window CSS Styles, again, to get rid of it. OK. Window Databases, and now this is getting quite advanced. We aren't going to be working with databases at the moment, but there's the area of the screen to help you work with them. And also Bindings, Server Behaviors, and Components. The application options are really quite advanced, and we aren't going to be worrying about these at the moment. You see, within the lines here, those are the four sections of the application, of the application area. So let's just get rid of that for now. OK, Window. Files is showing. Let's turn that off, so we tuck it away for now. What else is available? Also Assets and Snippets. 
So let's bring files back, actually. And there we go. There's assets. And there's snippets. OK, next, window tag inspector. That's to look at the HTML tags within your document and CSS tags within your document in detail. And there's also a behaviors tag. Now, this is a quick guided tour. You don't need to worry about what all this is just yet, but it's a quick guided tour of the interface and how to work with it. OK, there's also results, and now this will appear at the bottom. And the results area of the screen often appears. It will appear on a number of occasions. For example, if you're doing a search, an automatic search and replace throughout your document, for example, let's say you're replacing the name John Smith with Jim Smith. You're doing a search to find all instances of John Smith and replacing them with Jim Smith then the results of that search and replace would appear here, in the results box. And there's also, in the results area of the screen, there are tabs. You can see there's a search tab, a reference tab, validation tab, and so on. And if we click on the results text to tuck it away for now, and there's also window reference, history, frames, and so on. You don't need to worry too much about those now. And there's workspace layout, which allows you to click on code, or design, or dual screen. For example, clicking on dual screen brings up the following. And it's customizable as well. We have the code inspector, as it's called, here. And if we just drag that out of the way, you see what's happened. So it presents the screen in quite a different way, but it's all very customizable as well. So let's close Code Inspector. Let's close this. Let's close that. And all these as well. OK, so Window, Workspace Layout, and let's try Coder. Let's see what happens there. And that's what the coder look is. You can see that choosing those options restructures the look of the screen. They're the same elements, but it restructures them in a slightly different way of working if you prefer to work that way. OK, so Window, Workspace Layout. Let's try Designer and see how that looks. OK, Designer looks like that. With these options on the right again as before, Properties box at the bottom, and then the main editing area of the screen here. So once again, Window Workspace Layout Coder. You may prefer to work in this way. Window Workspace Layout Dual Screen. Quite a different way to work with these floating windows. Code Inspector there. And OK, we're browsing the files here. So if we want to change it, you can just go back to the Window menu, or just close that, and close. OK, we'll drag these over there and close that. OK, let's quickly go back to the most familiar view, which is Designer View. There we go. Actually, it's worth getting familiar with the correct terminology now, because obviously learning the correct terminology just makes it easier to work with Dreamweaver in the future, learn Dreamweaver more quickly, and also communicate with other people about what you're doing in Dreamweaver, of course. So here, if we just click on here, it brings up a menu. And you see each of these are called panel groups. These are known as panels. And because this has several options, they're known as panel groups. So we can maximize the panel group, or uncheck it. OK.
Actually, let's close the panel group if we wish. And it's gone. So click on Tag Inspector, and we can do the same there. We can maximize, we can close it, and application as well if we wish. Click there and close. And here, click on the menu. and close the panel group if we wish. And to bring it back, of course, just click on Window and CSS Styles, for example, and it's back. So it's that easy. Or again, we can just tuck it away. And actually, if we just bring them back, bring back the panels as they're known, Window, Hide Panels, to hide everything and clear the screen instantly, like that. And if you want to bring them back, just show panels, and they're back. So those are the main areas of the screen, and clearly, once you're familiar with them, you can customize things to the way you want to work. Then, if parts of the screen do disappear temporarily, or parts of the screen are blocked from your view, then you know how to customize your workspace or the screen the way you wish to work within Dreamweaver.